meet you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, yeah, the earth is flat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, whatever. The earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship anchored over the Midwest breadbasket. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you're too busy being distracted by all the hurricanes as of late, which we may talk about tonight. We'll see. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are listening to this and it's not September 5th, 2017, well, that means it's a rerun. So if you call in, you're not going to be getting me live. You'll go to voicemail and I'll probably listen to it. But we won't be talking like I am now. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery. Kids are never the problem. They are born scientists. The problem is always the adults. They beat the curiosity out of kids. They outnumber kids. They vote. They wield resources. That's why my public focus is primarily adults. Who said that? None other than he who normally shall not be named, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Announcements. Who's got the announcements? I do. Let's see. Flat Earth Conference just had some new tickets open up. Uh, we squeeze, we're going to squeeze in another two dozen and five more VIP. Don't know how they did it. Maybe they knocked down a wall. I'm not sure. But if you guys want any, please, by all means, uh, go to fe2017.com. And there should be some clickable links there to, to get more tickets. Remember, I'm going to be going and a whole bunch of people are going to be going. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is November 9th in Raleigh, North Carolina. I haven't even given out the phone call phone number yet, and we still have calls coming in. First one's going to be from Beverly Hills, California, but we're not going to pick it up just yet because I have a few more announcements, then we'll maybe we'll pick up calls. Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge is still in effect. If you don't know that, well, that is by now. Ask somebody. The big money challenge is still in effect, $25,000 at least. Anyone who can prove the globe, if you're interested, contact Kathy Dunson at P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. That is paralandra77 at gmail.com. Very nice person, Kathy. I met her down at the Atlanta conference just about a month ago. DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, is doing a billboard that is going up near the conference center. 
You can check out the GoFundMe, A Stranger's Guide to FE Billboard. It's going to run September, October, and November. The next big event before the National Conference is going to be with Rob Skiba and Amber Plaster and other people at TakeOnTheWorld17.com. That's September 15th and 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. If you don't get enough information at TakeOnTheWorld17.com, please feel free to call Chris Bailey at 440-668-6373. No guests tonight. We're going to do phone calls. We're going to do some emails and see what happens. Maybe next week we'll do a guest. I'm not sure yet. Oh, although i got to let you guys know in advance. Next week I will not be here. Next week it's going to be a rerun. I am going to be in Houston with the documentary team. We're hopefully going to be shooting some stuff down at the NASA Museum down Houston. Hopefully it's still open after the flood. So we'll see about that. The also real quick, if you guys, anyone wants to call in and you don't want to talk to me for whatever you want to just listen through your phone, there's a separate phone number for that. So you don't have to freak out because every once in a while I'll see a phone number and I'll go, oh yeah, I'm going to talk to Georgia next. And all of a sudden Georgia hangs up and that's because they think, uh, you know, it's, you, you can call in and there's no obligation to talk to me. There's a listen only number that is 641-793-7117. And what's Peanut Gallery got going on real quick? Peanut Gallery says, take a life vest to Houston. That's funny. It's good. Although I'm going to be in North Houston. Not going to be in in South Houston. So I don't think it's going to be a problem. Phone number to call in. There's going to be two of them. The all-important 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Or you can call the show line directly, which is 213 233 Three nine nine eight. That is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. And either way, it'll get to me. So there we go. And so you give the UK number out. Do I have the UK number? Yeah, all right, fine. For those in the UK, they're listening. There is a number just for you. It is four four two zero three three nine three two six seven one. I believe, as my vision is failing me. I have been on the computer all day today, and I am just dizzy all right let's pick up a phone call why not right beverly hills california beverly hills are you there beverly hey hills? mark it's, yeah it's andy from beverly hills we've talked before hey what's going on man what's up okay so the thing i'm still trying to wrap my head around mm-hmm. i'm still trying to wrap my head around um how how those guys in the 1500s how they were able to utilize the you know how this place is built for uh to to it's basically built with the universe option like a football mm-hmm. play you know what i'm yeah. saying okay isn't that basically it so how did they know to use that play at that time how the <laughs> hell did they know that those guys the, when it really in the 15, came in, in the, remember yeah. in the fifth in the 1500s you don't are we talking about just ships in general no, I'm talking about the guys who ushered in the, um, you know, the the um, the propaganda guys like. Oh, 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 oh! You mean how? Okay, are we talking about just all, the people in our civilization or the people that actually built this place? No, no, I'm talking about the guys who were the first, you know, the first propaganda media guys. Okay, yeah, Co- Copernicus, the Catholic Church, yeah. those guys. They, I have no doubt that they were kind of tipped off. I, I have, no, for me, if you ever want to look into some interesting stuff, look into Nostradamus. And some of the stuff that he, you know, where he got his inspiration from. I have no doubt that sooner or later, they, the, the people that built this place had to, in, and I said this in the clues, had to introduce the concept to the very, very basic people that were running around in our civilization. Give them the idea and let them run with it. Because eventually, oh, I see. see what I mean? They, no, they didn't come up with it on its own. If they did, like, for example, look at Copernicus. Where you know the the Copernican model, he uh, very interesting. This is not secret knowledge here. Copernicus made sure because he was the guy that supposedly came up with the mm-hmm. whole heliocentric thing. He made sure wait that until he, he died, right? Wait, not yeah, not until he died, till years after he died, so that like no one would mm-hmm. desecrate his grave, type of thing. Because mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. way way out there. You would have think that a guy that that put that. That's how foreign this concept was. Literally up until 500 years right. ago, the, the whole flat earth concept was extremely easy to understand, even without technology, 
because it was you know because it was no different than a, a sound stage back then. And so what had, did these polarizing talk? What did these polarizing talking head figures uh, stand to benefit from from uh, propelling this? From distance. From starting this? Uh, the the easiest thing for them was distancing themselves from the church because up until then the religious groups of the era and most notably christianity let's let's call it what it is christianity basically ran the show and there were some people out there it's like look if we're going to break away how can we do uh -huh. it and so it benefited them and it worked very very well i mean look look at how strong science has gotten in the last 500 years, and to, to get me wrong, I'm not knocking. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to choose sides here necessarily. Although right so now you're, I'm. You're still. Go you're ahead. still insinuating. You're still insinuating that um, that Copernicus and those guys uh, were not just were not just doing this benignly, but they're actually part of something deeper. Well, they wouldn't have had to know. Meaning, uh, Copernicus didn't know crap i don't think i mean so whoever what, put, so, put the idea okay. to them they, they were just pawns in it that's all they were oh they were just like, pawns basically you're saying yeah i mean you introduce a really interesting model and let the intellectuals of their day run with it and it's it i mean literally science is you know i know people say well science was born a lot before no no science as we know it that's when it was really born yeah. because right. it was at that point you had a model that science could rally behind which was look here's Basically the off-world science you mean there you go off-world science this that's good actually there's i may steal that difference. and it's proprietary right there's a huge difference right yeah there's a you're, huge you're right difference though off-world science and on i have no problem with on-world science whatsoever i keep telling everyone oh yeah yeah you in know, fact, i have no problem with that i i when i when i go against science every once in a while i do the same thing which is look you want to tell me the the boiling temperature of water at sea level? Hey, I got no problem. That's so, that's great. You yeah. want to tell me about the core of the Earth and the core of Neptune and how the what makes up the rings of Saturn? Uh, I don't think you're going to be doing that anytime soon. So it's but yeah. but that's how it was born. And then once they had the globe, didn't matter if they could prove it or not. It's a catchy little icon that just yeah. had legs, and it just kept going and going and going. Easy to make. You know, put it in a child's hand, and and that's it. You're you know, a few generations later, it was gospel. That's the part. That, also, that... one more thing. Go ahead. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know, you know, I know you, got... you're helping me understand this. But um, uh, also, uh, what do you think they do with uh, with uh, you know how like they they got these astronauts up in the ISS that are staying there for like six months or a time or longer or a year, yeah. Well, so where are they taking them? Oh, that's like, easy. Just, hiding just, out just, for a year? just fly, fly them out to whatever base you want, some Air Force base, and put them under lock and key, and and make sure that you know the the guards that are guarding them sign the disclosure agreements, and that's that's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah, you just so keep them on the ground. Probably even assume they're gone. So their families probably assume they're gone. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. It's no different than Cap safe. Capricorn One, the movie from the late seventies. Whereas the family doesn't know anything. And why would you? In fact, it helps you if the family knows nothing because it adds to the legitimacy of it. Uh, it really does, right? Yeah, because then they're oh, interviewed. Wow. You, you can't detect anything in their voice. I mean, part of me, and I know some guys in the, in the community will disagree, say that, that part of me thinks that Neil deGrasse Tyson still doesn't know. Not the whole thing. And yeah, because, I don't think he does. <laughs> because if you because you can't put a guy on camera. I think they learned with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and all those guys and, and John mm -hmm. Glenn that if you put them in front of the camera, you you know, there's a chance that they, you know, they may they may buckle a bit. And having Neil come on camera because, he you know, he does tours. That's all he does now. He's, he's on camera all the time. You don't mm -hmm. want him wavering in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form. What better way than to keep him? We've, you've seen this in crime movies. It's like the, le oh, you know, the yeah. less the less you knew, the better. Or the better line from from any movie is is if you don't know, then if they torture you, you won't tell the truth. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing for you to tell. Mm -hmm. The less you know, the better. You are telling the truth, as far as you're concerned. Exactly. Exactly. He could no, pass. Well, he'll probably stuff. could pass a lie detector test. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're probably good. Anyway, do you have a uh, lot of callers right now? Uh, no, no, not yet. I don't, which means I may have to dig into my email. But that's okay. 
What's uh, so anybody? To, I, go ahead. Are we allowed to call back if if we get back through? Yes, you're allowed to. Yes, of course. Yeah. No, I've taken I've cool, taken some calls. Talk to you but I, oh, but really? it's it's not as it's not as easy nowadays because now I can see the caller ID coming in. So you still get put at the back of the line, but that's okay. No worries. Any any shout outs okay. before I send you back into Beverly Hills? <laughs> I'm gonna give a shout out to my uncle, my mom's brother. He's probably the biggest glow card I've ever met. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's probably his name, people. His out name's Ted. Ted. <laughs> Nice. All right. What's up, Ted? You're a globe tart. All right. All right, man. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening, okay? All right. You too, man. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, Beverly Hills. I don't get a lot of calls from Beverly Hills, but hey, why not? Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. Either way, you're going to get through. Peanut Gallery. Let's see if he's up to one sec. Give you a K number. Oh, is that, what did I say it wrong? NDT 408 for NDT. Never been in space, so he knows what he has taught. Yes. Yeah, that's one thing about Neil deGrasse Tyson, which you got to ask yourself, which is why has he never been to space? I mean, of all the people, all the candidates to send to space, why hasn't he gone? It's an excellent question. All right. Uh, here's a call coming in from, could be Minnesota. We'll check it out. I did give out the wrong number. Really? It says UK. Two. What's my vision's going? Was it 2871 or 2671? That was probably, oh, sorry. Yeah, that was me. I'm just, my eyes get blurry this time of night. Oh, sorry. Anyway, um, Minnesota. Let's pick them up. Minnesota, you're on live with Strange World right now. What are we talking about? Hey, Mark, West Days Flat Earth News Talk. How are you today? Uh, Wes. There we go. I wait for the sigh. Uh, flat Earth News. Uh, honestly, Wes, the fact that you spend <laughs> your, your precious phone calls from county jail calling here. Yeah, I know. I got three minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Oh, man. Uh, no, I was watching your show, the show today with Patricia and uh, I was just watching a whole video that somebody put together. I, 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 I subscribe to him now. I don't recall the name. But, yeah, he was talking that exact same thing about the sun and the moon uh, doing what they want to. Yeah. And he was also, he was also showing something really far, far out, and I had to recheck to make sure he was a flat earther uh, because he was talking about a projector that, they have way out in space and was projecting it down. I, yeah, I, but he was yeah, talking about yeah. in the the uh, the the, the fear, uh, thermosphere. So oh, it's man. like, okay, well, that could be possible. I don't know. I suppose. I mean, you know, it'd be a lot easier for people to understand if we had slightly better technology in our planetariums. For example, the moon but phase. Was, but, Go ahead. Oh, hold on. But but this was. An actual picture from NASA that he was showing, oh, and it did was show it a light way off to the distance, and then it showed the so I guess you could call it a weird looking sun. Hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. When I find the link, I'll I'll send it to you. Okay. But anyhow, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I was just saying that uh, when it comes to planetariums, of course, we can they can display everything in the sky except for the sun. And they kind of glossed over it in the Truman Show, where it's like, you know, cue the sun and the sun comes up. But because we don't have a projection system that can generate that sort of candle power at, uh, at that, that we know of. That we know of. I mean, even if you had decent OL, OLED technology, I don't think you could do it with a... Am I off the air? This is a network connection but error. Because, uh, Am I still here? The, the, the chemtrail stuff helps. I'm still here. Oh, well, apparently I am, too. It was weird. It said a network uh, connection occurred just briefly. Trying again now. Are you trying now? That's all right. Well, as long as I'm still on, the peanut gallery will let me know if I get kicked off. The, yeah. Um, uh, but, but yeah, it, it, that, that's the only thing we can't do in a planetarium right now. So if we could do that, that would be really easy for, for people to, to get it. But we can't. We can only do nighttime stuff. We can't do daytime right. yet. But we're getting that's, there. That's true. But like I said, with the... 
chemtrail stuff and metallic crap floating around up there. Right. Who knows? Yeah. Because everybody will agree the sun looked weird. Yeah, it did look weird. That particular day, it just didn't look normal. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it could, it could have been a, um, it could have been projecting in front of the sun, as far as we know. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hard to say, but well, I was there, and, and the sun definitely looked strange. I mean, not just the yeah. eclipse part of it, of course, it was going to look strange, but it definitely looked close. Right. Uh, but for me, uh-huh. it's, I'm, I'm completely biased now. So. Well, it, doesn't look, it didn't look like, I'm sure it didn't look like it did back when you were a kid. Because yeah. I, when you were talking about when you were a kid, I remember the same thing. I was, you know, in my teens, and I recall it, and it's <laughs> not being even close. Yeah. what they were showing on TV. Yeah. Because here in Minnesota, we didn't get to see Italy. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky. I was in just the perfect spot. Who uh, it, it was amazing for me because there was no media around except for us. We had the right. park that pretty was, much. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, was- and, it'll be, it'll be, and unfortunately, because it was a documentary team, we can't give out the footage yet because they're going to put it as part of the documentary and... And they're not going to release it until they get it distributed or sold or however they're going to do it. So yeah, I, I was lucky. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Your people will call my people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's going to suck. Yep, it will. <laughs> well, my my three minutes are up, but let's see what Peanut Gallery has. I know he's oh right, been, right, right. The right. Minute the quote heard, from the Peanut minute Gallery. He heard me. I'm sure he was trying to find something. He texts me saying, "Hey, you calling in?" I was trying to text back. My phone went, it died. So now I'm on my Obama phone. The, te- the, the, the quote from the peanut gallery is, the further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those that speak it. Who said that? George Orwell. Well, that's, that's one in general. Not, not, not in directed towards me. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He gets less and less each time I call in. That's cool. Yeah. All right, Mark. Well, you take care. And uh, I, I had to jump in the minute I heard you say mailbag. I'm like, oh, no. uh, well, I, I don't mind. Call. Look, I get a lot of emails, so I don't mind reading them <laughs> on the show. It's it's Peanut Gallery and a few of the regulars that say, no, don't read any emails. But uh, I, well, I, that's I, the I whole idea get... why we call. That's why we always call in. We're trying to avoid uh, that. So It's come on. It's not like I'm reading Just erotic FYI. story. You know what? I'm, I love I may your start emails. I, may start I love from... your emails, but I like I like to listen to them at leisure. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, man. Hey, okay. you have a you have a good night, and I will I'll talk to you soon. Okay. You too. Bye. All right. Bye bye. All right. So there goes Wes into wherever. Uh, this one looks like it could be long distance. So let's figure out where it is. And you are on live with Strange World right now. Where are you calling from? Is this Mark? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm calling from Malaysia. From Malaysia? Malaysia. (laughs) What's going on in Malaysia? How's that? Well, uh, hopefully uh, a lot of things here in the next uh, six months. Because I don't want to talk too long. Okay. Uh, but I want actually what I want to do is was, was I need some help. Uh, first, I want to thank you and a lot of the others. I don't get to watch very much of it live. Okay. Uh, I look at a lot of the videos. Okay. And I look at a lot of them from let's say the anti characters. The way it gives you some good information as well. Um, but what I need is some help from, uh, not for me personally, but I thought, okay, I'm going to throw some stuff at the people listening and you can pass around. If it's things that I've been able to be unreal, this tool's going on with the flowers. So I want to just mention some things. Don't really want to discuss them. Just uh, it's some ideas and sure. tools that people may want to chase. Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, and first and foremost, though, I do want to tell you that I think shill's the wrong word. Just somebody that sells their own thing, but they don't shoot down others. Okay. That's a pugnant one. Okay? okay. Anyway, and I didn't think that uh, Shaq 
recanted on the flat earth. I, I, I don't know how many videos there were about it, but I, I saw him on three or four, and he said it's not flat, it's round. He never said globe, he never said sphere. Nice. So interesting choice of words. Indeed. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing I, I wanted to bring up, uh, and I, I'll do this as quick as I can, Mm-hmm. I'm not so sure. You know, my hobby for about 25 years has been ancient civilizations, and mm-hmm. Rome's not old enough. So, uh, I'm not so sure a guy named Eratosthenes existed. Mm-hmm. And even if he did, I don't believe what they think his conclusion was, okay, because of the distance between Elephant and Island, okay. uh, as well. And Alexander's too far, and they didn't pay anybody to walk. Now, maybe if they had airplanes in, maybe. Okay. And he certainly, and I'm going to make a very positive statement here that people are going to wonder about. Pythagoras ever thought the earth was round, or a globe. Never. Absolutely, positively didn't. They use that to soften up the earth. The reason is, all you have to do is go to Greece. Where did Pythagoras spend his first 40 years of his life? It was on an island called Samos. Mm-hmm. There's 11 islands, 11 land masses he can see from the beaches of Samos. And I'm sure he went There's some as far as 40 and 50 miles away. Now, they might have had some height, but the, he would have known. That it wouldn't. It became. I'm not saying it's, this formula is wrong. Right. All I'm saying is that that that's just the formula for gold, right? So we can't say the formula is wrong. All we said is it doesn't apply to something flat. Sure. Anyway, I want to get to that about the Greeks. Okay. Uh, but and I don't. Uh, most of the way is if you want to talk about the uh, I'll continue with the Greeks. Don't trust what you read about some of those ancient Greek philosophers. You always. I see the caveat in there that most of what we know about the uh, Pythagoras and all these guys was written by Strabo. Hey, um, do you Strabo? Do you want to? Uh, I don't know how much longer you want to go because we're going to be going to music here in about 15 seconds. You want to go through the first break? Well, I guess I have to. Yeah. I, okay. I okay. Stay, stay with me. It, it, Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Back to Strange World. Truth is often stranger in fiction. We got a guy from Malaysia on the phone, and we're gonna take him off mute. You still there? You got a few more minutes. What do you got? Okay, okay. So now let's go on to the other stuff. Uh, I just want to say, as far as the moon and the eclipse, that was interesting to look at some of the videos. I think the best explanation for the moon was given by a professor named Erwin Shapiro. Hmm. from the Harvard astronomy or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. He said the best explanation for the moon is observational error. It's not there. Sometimes they tell the truth. Okay. By the way, if it's cold light, it must be a potassium cyanide laser, you think? That's what I would think, yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't take a real genius to figure that out, should it? (laughs) Uh, I see what you did there. Is that a, yeah, like, okay. yeah, I All got right. that. I got that. You're old enough to get that. I know. It's <laughs> one of your favorite movies. I, it is one of my favorite movies. Real Genius with I Val know. I heard you say that on one, one show. Yeah, yes. that's good. Okay. Yep. Oh, and by the way, as long as we're talking about shows, you might be interested in Deep Space Nine, Season 1, Episode 9, Move Along Home. Really? 
Okay, yeah, and the Twilight Zone, Old Man in the Cave, and I'm talking about the old Twilight Zone series. Okay. You might pass on to Ron Skiba if he's interested in blowing up the Van Allen belt, as mm -hmm. Nassau suggested. He might go back and look at a 1950s movie, not the TV series later, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Ooh. I think it had Raquel Welch in it, as I recall. <laughs> okay, that okay. was their mission. Okay, right. and I would, I would, I thought it might be interesting if uh, either Ron Skiba or somebody on, uh, similar to his attitude would like to would you know how he dissected the Truman Show? Yep. I would suggest you di somebody dissect the movie Contact. Okay. And pay particular attention to everything that's said and the numbers. And don't get the un don't uh, make sure it's an uncut version because they took a couple of key comments out of there. All right. So even I, Carl tried to tell us in the end. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm just I'm just throwing it out. As far as Antarctica, uh, yeah. yeah, there's Bunger Hills. People ought to look at that. That's where uh, Bird's team, the guy, that, the guy Bunger is the pilot that discovered the open waters. Okay. That's why I was named after him. Mm -hmm. Used to be able to see it in Google Earth, but they snowed it over now. Okay, and it, uh, and he never made it to where if if they were going after the Nazis, they never made it according to the, all the videos and all uh, to the Nazi part of Antarctica. All right. All right. Uh, uh, I'll let you know that uh, since you lived in Boulder, I'll tell you the Denver Airport uh, is at the top of a place called Rocky Mountain Arsenal. I believe okay, that. Is, yep connected one one could be said can connected to uh, rocky flats underground in yep. the early 80s they had a lot of earthquakes in denver supposedly it was the army corps of engineers were doing some type of drilling up in the mountains and filling the holes with water so they quit doing that to stop the earthquakes so mm. that's before you were there but you got to be aware of that okay, okay. all right um you you also should be aware that there's a uh, or I'd like to just point out for some of the listeners that there is a fascist symbol in Congress, one on each side of where the vice president and the speaker of the house sits. Uh, I've seen it on the videos. Unbelievable. Okay. And you know, the, the other thing about being under a dome, uh, that means the climate's controlled and monitored. So that ends climate, the global warming uh, scenario. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, you're probably, you're probably aware that they discovered Sodom and Gomorrah and the Caldwell family discovered the real Mount Sinai, or at least brought to light. They didn't discover it, but they found it and brought it to light. Mm -hmm. Okay, as well as the Red Sea crossing of the Exodus. Um, I, the other thing that somebody other, you know, might be interested in is I think Mud Fossil or Wise Up has said that the mountains were built. Well, that seems to be confirmed in a little known book uh it's actually written uh it was one of the major i think uh warnings that muhammad give it's not right. part of the quran it's in his warnings oh. where gabriel told him we built the mountains to keep the land from moving right. okay so i thought you had what? somebody that might be interested in that one one more and, thing unfortunately uh, I've, I, I've got to pick up a call from texas after okay this. that's fine i think uh I, well i Quickly say gravity. Gravity is actually Gauss's law, not Newton's. Okay. Gauss's law is the opposite of Newton's. And do electromagnetic news. And then for the others on the most current thing on North Korea, how can they, how can the U.S. military say they're scared of one ICBM coming from North Korea when they got the dew line on the whole West Coast in northern Canada and was defending us against Russian nuclear webs exactly. for 40 years? Yeah. yeah. We had thousands. Yeah. Agreed. So the whole the, that thing's a scam, right? Yes. And Neil deGrasse Tyson's initials to me are K D T. I spell it K N E E L. That's what, what? you should be doing. <laughs> anyway, I, I'll I will let, uh, leave it on NASA. You know, I know you don't think that somebody should sue them. Okay. Well, no, I no, no. They, it's, they could sue them. But, but. No, I, I think there should be a civil suit. You won't win the civil suit, but can you yeah. imagine the publicity? When you find out that a major space agency that's not owned by the U.S. government, it's right. contracted to, but not owned, okay, yeah. uh, is, is uh, uh, you know, a fraud. 
Yeah, exactly. That, that will resonate around Europe and the rest of the world, right? Cool. And we should have known they didn't go to the moon when they didn't visit, go down into Shorty's crater. Right. And when they didn't have any Mars, Mars supposedly probe that went to Mars, uh, ever go to where the face on Mars is supposed to be. Yeah, I agree. Hey, so I love, I love to keep chatting with you, man. But I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. No, Thanks. That's all right. All right. Oh, bye. Have a good one in Malaysia. All right. Uh, let's pick up Texas real quick. Texas, you're on live with Strange World. What's going on? What's up, Mike? Hey. How are you what? doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. This is Shannon Honey. Hey. Uh, I uh, it's probably been a while. I get so many calls. Wait. Um, yeah. I probably owed you a phone call or two, didn't I? Possibly. Possibly. What, uh, what, what can I do for you this fine evening? Uh, well, I was calling to ask you what you thought about the hurricane. The the one that just passed Houston or the one that's coming to Florida? Possibly both. What do you think? I think that weather modification and weather control is a very real thing. I thought, I've thought that, though, since Katrina. Katrina, you know, when okay. you look. So why? What What's your thoughts on it? Well, did you see anything about, you know, that test? facility that NASA has in Louisiana. Yes, that was the one that uh, uh, Brother Sanchez put out, I believe. I'm not sure that's what I thought, but uh, the day after, really, they're just making clouds. <laughs> I know. I know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And have you have you seen anything about this possible storm coming from the Pacific Ocean towards Alaska or California that looks like it might turn into a hurricane? I have not heard of such an animal. Okay, well, it's not all mainstream media, but people that are monitoring the weather have picked up on the storm, and it was it's way bigger than Harvey was. Really? And nobody, well, and nobody said anything about it. All right. Well, I'll take a look. If I if I get a chance, I've only heard of the two so far, uh, Irma and and Harvey. But if there's one coming from the Pacific, boy, I'd love to see it. Yeah, it showed that it was coming from like China area and going across the Pacific towards Alaska, maybe California. I don't know. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's still going on with that because it was a little bit back that I've seen it, maybe a couple of days. But uh, anyway. I'm I'm kind of curious in, in Irma myself, just because I'm going to be traveling uh, to Texas on Sunday. So curious. Will will yep. it turn into something and will it go into the I hope it doesn't go into the Gulf of Mexico. Boy, that would be a that'd be some. Oh, I know. It, it kind of looks like it may be. Yeah. Well, Maybe I mean, well, the way. question is, does it die out when it hit the Gulf of Mexico or does it pick up more steam? I'm not sure. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that just depends on who whoever's doing whatever they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's too tempting to use the new toys for uh, for some well, of these guys. I I've also just recently learned about something else that has to do with the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how far you've looked and seen any of that. Uh, I mean, for me, it's a second tier conspiracy and the Catholic Church, of course, is tied to all sorts of fun stuff, but, uh, why yeah. is it, is it something brief or what, what, can you summarize it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll, we'll save that one for another, another time then. Any, yeah, uh, that's any, a huge, that's, that's a, big a one? huge one. Okay. Yeah. That's a big one. Any, so uh, any shout outs you want to give? Well, I noticed the last guy was talking about Rob Skiba. He did have a pretty good video that I watched the other day about how the sudden moon and, like, a pencil in water and refraction from our atmosphere. Right. Which I really enjoyed because I was I watched the sunset today. And yesterday, like, you know when you hand, hold your hand straight out and you can, like, judge the sunset by fingers? Have you ever heard of this? <laughs> like um, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Okay, well, if you hold your arm straight out, <clears throat> and my fingers at the horizon, the sun was 
right above my finger, and the okay. moon was it, and the moon was as well on the other horizon. Okay. So I was watching in the sunset day, and I was watching for the moon, watching for the moon, and I couldn't see it. But there's not a cloud in the sky, but it's very. Uh, the atmosphere was different. It wasn't like cloudy, but the, it was thick. And I couldn't see the moon rise until it was probably two fingers up from the horizon. If hmm. you hold it out straight, you know. All right. I couldn't see it until that time, and I was like, "Well, that explains a lot. It's that atmosphere, kind of. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. It was interesting. I tried right. to record it, but my phone has horrible video. That's all right. So. No worries. Anyway. All right. How's well, Patricia? I haven't had a chance to talk to her. Oh, you you haven't had a chance to talk to her? I haven't had a chance to catch her show or anything, and I hope she's doing well because I know she's, she's from Houston. You know, she's doing well. Uh, she lives in northern Houston, so she didn't get touched. You know, there was some rain, but but her house is just fine. So <laughs> no flooding. That's good. No, nope, no, nope. she's good. Anyway, hey, you have a good rest of your evening. Okay. You too. All right. Got it. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye bye. All right. Let's pick up. Ooh, I don't know where this one's from. Six two six area code, maybe. Try this one. Six two six area code. You're on live with Strange World right now. Hey, what's up, Mark? How's it going, man? Uh, it's going pretty good. <laughs> How's it going with you? Uh, it's going fine with me, dude. This is Josh. The Uber guy from uh, California, man. Right on. What's uh, what, what's happening in the the wide world of flat Earth down in California? Uh, well, first off, we had our second meetup in Rancho uh, on Friday. Oh, cool! And that was pretty cool. That was pretty good. We had a pretty good turnout. Nice. Um, we actually had. Uh, one of the guys that does some moderating for ODD's 24 seven channel. Really? Uh, he showed up. Cool. Yeah. Great. But you know what? Um, ODD actually helped, uh, promote the meetup. Uh, I like, saw that. What, like two days before it? I saw that. That was pretty cool. Cause we actually, um, a couple showed up that they don't really believe in the flat earth, but they like listening to ODD <clears throat> and they heard about it through him. Yeah. And so they showed up and, uh, we got to chat with them cause we had a, uh, kind of like a little after party thing at, uh, yard dogs. Oh, cool. Or yard house or yard dog. I forget the name of it, man. <laughs> cause you were drinking. But, no, dude, I don't drink. I don't like. Oh, to drink. okay. All right. Uh, it doesn't doesn't really agree with me. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Like, you know, you drink too much and you get all woozy and stuff. I, I don't like I that. do know the feeling. Yep, been there myself. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't like it when the world is spinning. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I think that's the only time the world spins is when you have too much to drink. You know what? Uh, someone was talking about that the other day online about, uh, getting drunk in the world spinning and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That's the only time you're going to feel the Coriolis effect, man. Yep. Absolutely. It's a good one. I've seen that but, actually been passed uh, around a few times in chat. But, uh, let's see. Um, meetups. ODD. Dude, I just totally drew a blank right I now, know. man. That's why I'm trying uh, to help you. Oh, yeah. ODD. Um, oh, yeah, dude. We had some great people show up to the meetup, though. Uh, we had a bunch of people show up to the second one that were there at the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a bunch of people. Um, there was Mike that showed up. Uh, he actually heard about it through your show. Neat. Uh Danny showed up again. Uh, Nathan Thompson. I'm not sure if you know who he is. I do know who Nathan Thompson is. Yes. Uh, he showed up to both of them. Great. He's actually a pretty cool guy. Uh, he's kind of like the 
I almost want to call him like the hype man for our little group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he gets out there. Uh, he's been on a couple of interviews, and uh, there was a documentary team working with him. So good for him. As a matter of fact, uh, the same one of the guys that, or the guys, or I don't know who was following you around um, mm -hmm. at some point, but I guess was following him and was actually there at the meetup. One of one of the guys who was uh, working with my team. One of the guys that was documenting you, yeah. Cool. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, he was there. He uh, was documenting Nathan. Uh, well, because I mean, Nathan runs the what the biggest flat Earth group on Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, I was wondering if he would because I put I gave him his contact info. He was looking for people in L.A. and I go, look, if you're in L.A., there's groups happening. So uh, yeah, I'm that that's great. Good to good to hear. As a matter of fact, he got. Uh, the documentary guy got shut down by the security guard at the food court. Uh, freaking California. I swear. You, you know, you oh, guys are the yeah. only ones that do that. I don't even think New York is that hard on them. Well, New York's a little bit because you, the union thing. But California, way, you know, if they see a camera, it's like, you got a permit? Because he didn't have a permit, I'm, I'm guessing. Yep, that's exactly what he said. Uh, uh, it was either a permit or the fine. And it was kind of cool because Nathan was like, you know what? How much is the fine? And so he actually chased down the security guard to go ask him how much the fine was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know which guy you're talking about, and he's he's used to it by now. It happens to him all the time, apparently. Yeah, I believe his name was uh, Daniel. That's it. It's Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. He was a good guy. I had to send a piece of paper because he told me that he got me too much on camera talking. Yeah. Yeah, if you talk a certain amount, they make you sign a uh, a waiver saying that it's okay for them to use your likeness. Yeah, I, I could care less. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I said the same thing. I was like, whatever. You know, because you know how those things go. It's like, look, if it'll help you, help it happen, because there's a lot of those, a lot of the documentaries don't go anywhere because people won't sign the paper. Uh, you, you can't use it like um, uh, Matt up in California. I'm sorry, up in San Francisco. Math Powerland, I guarantee he wouldn't sign anything. So, wow. anyway, what else? What else is going on? Uh, nothing much. I uh, met. Oh, check this out. Met somebody who actually, uh, at first told me, like that. I, I guess they just had a problem with religion. Okay. Okay. And so I was like, well, okay, no problem. Um, first off, it's never been about religion. It's always been about a relationship with God, for one. Sure. For two, uh, you do believe we live on a flat earth, right? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, well, okay. So it's kind of like a snow globe. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, so who built the snow globe? There you go. Like... You can't get around that. Nope. And uh, it, it was just really interesting actually meeting somebody that. And then it was kind of weird because I uh, don't want to say that they backtracked or anything, but then they were like, well, I mean, I believe in a creator. Right. And then I was like, well, so then there's rules. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough uh, to I be mean, an atheist in Flat Earth. Exactly. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh just been talking to people. I've been giving them Uber rides, man. Uh, talked to a neuroscientist the other day. Uh, I'm going to post that video up. Uh, early this morning, I posted a video of uh, in a ride I had with a couple English guys mm -hmm. that were telling me that they were open-minded and I was like, okay, no problem. So I hit them with some flat earth. I uh, started out with uh, water being flat. And just as I was getting that out, one of the guys goes, so you're going to tell me that the earth is flat. And I was just like, no, I just got questions, man. So I just kept going. And uh, it was, it's so weird, dude. Cause during the video, you can just hear them. And they're completely, the cognitive dissonance is just yeah. 
oozing out of them yep. while they're telling me throughout the whole video how open-minded they are. You can oh, yeah. hear them the whole time saying how open-minded they are as they're trying to argue against everything. It's it's hilarious, dude. Yeah. It was yeah. it's funny. The, it's the ultimate open-minded test. Absolutely. And people can, they are open-minded about a bunch of things, but this, this is the final, final piece. And it's a tough one for some people. Yep. And so, uh, real quick before I get off, um, I know that I had shot you a couple emails. Uh, I talked to, uh, my buddy JV and, uh, Whenever, whenever you're open, um, we'll set it up to where uh, we can get All you over right. this way, man. Yeah, yeah. You just let me know. I mean, uh, it'll be. It'd have to be after Houston. I know. I know what we're talking about now. Uh, yeah. 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 Would love. Would love to. Tell you what. Uh, let me get back from Houston, and then after that, yeah, I'd love to come down to uh, Southern California, and and hang out with you guys. I. Uh, when are you taking off to Houston again? Sun Sunday. Okay, yeah, no, th no problem, dude. Uh, we were thinking, uh, like the beginning of like October or something like that. Sure, sure. Let's 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 yeah, we'll work on that when I when I come back. But yeah, that sounds fun. Alrighty then. All right. I uh, like I like I was saying, dude. I'm really gonna try to find that guy that carved flat Earth into the Riverside. Uh, okay. hillside on the side of the freeway, man. All that right, yeah, yeah. If you, can find, if you can find that guy, it'd be great. Because first off, I just want to meet him, just period, flat out, like just because. And secondly, I think it'd be really cool if, like, he was act like you know, like if the people in the community knew him. <laughs> but uh, just. Real quick before I get off, a shout out to uh, the guys that showed up to the meetup. Uh, the people that wanted to come that couldn't come. Evidently, one of the freeways decided to catch fire. So, uh, like, it was backed up all the way or something like that. I, there was something crazy going on. Uh, one of the freeways was shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, a lady that was going to come to the meetup uh, wasn't able to make it uh because of it and i bet you there's probably a couple other people that wanted to come that couldn't because of it uh but they uh we're planning on having once a month uh sounds about right cool sounds like it's a decent amount of time you know it gives us a couple of weeks to gather a bunch of stuff up uh and bounce it off each other when we see each other Cool. Sounds great. Like I was thinking about having one at a pool hall, but then I realized that that'd be a bad idea because we wouldn't be able to stop ourselves from using the billiard balls as examples for the solar system. Right. Right. Like, I just, like you just know that's going to happen like before it's over with. Yeah. But all right, man. I uh, talk to you later. And, all right. Uh, keep it flat, bro. All right. You have a good one. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Peace right. up. Okay. Uh, we are not going to do one more call before the break because we only got about 45 seconds, if that. So what are we going to do? We're going to just give out the phone number, 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. We'll come back and play everything the police ever sang, including every breath you take. Or we're going to play a Hall of Notes remake. Oh, I'll be watching you, by the way. Tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Not... I tell you what's better to do, buddy.
Welcome back to Strange World Part 3 of 4. And we have a couple calls that are out there, but before we pick them up, I'm going to pick, pick up I think California first, and then we'll pick up New York after that. Uh, I haven't done Flat Earth News in a little bit, so I wanted to kind of rattle off. What I'm doing is just going to YouTube, typing in Flat Earth, setting the filter to one week, and seeing what's new and interesting. And of course, you know, the numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, let's see, he did a Flat Earth Another Hot Potato show with Patricia this afternoon. D. Marble, the best looking man in Flat Earth, sporting a really nice fro. Did a video on how I got out of debt, which was interesting. Sun is the smoking gun Flat Earth 101, also by D. Marble. Excellent. Subtle Infinity, why Flat Earth really matters. Eh, he doesn't like me very much, but that's okay. Uh, I'm trying to look if there's anything here that really catches my eye. Quasi luminous, just cranking them out. Celebrate truth. Uh, he did an interview. I can't remember which show it was, but he did uh, an interview where the callers were calling in. The hosts were against him, but the callers weren't. I loved it. World history official making stuff. Flat Earth court. Globusters, of course, covering the flat Earth eclipse. Anything else? Anything else? I don't know. There's just so much stuff out there, guys. Beyond the imaginary curve, still love the fact that Dell's hammering away. Really wish he could stop being sniped by the trolls. I don't know what weakness he is leaving out there in the open to be exploited, but it does happen from time to time. Let's see. Phuket Word, new scientist on flat earth confirmation bias problem. So on and so on and so on. You know, you guys know the drill. Just go in to YouTube, type in flat earth, set the filter to what. Play with the filters, really, is what I'm saying. And if you want the real numbers, you go into filters and you sort by upload date. And then you'll see our real numbers. And as of today, I think it's 18.8 million, which is bigger than Lady Gaga, less than Donald Trump. So still happy about that. We're going to pick up California. He's been on the line long enough. I think it's 310 area code. 310 area code. Sorry for the wait. What's going on? Mark, you said I could call back. So I'm calling back. It's Andy. Dude! Seriously? All right. Can, all right, I I'm gonna put, back, I, right? All right. No, no, no. Hang on. What I'll do is I'm going to put you on mute. I will pick you up. I got to pick up New York first then. <laughs> okay, so. fine. That's fine. All right. You'll, you'll still be there, though. Don't worry. It's all fair. All right. All right. All right. New York. Start spreading the news. <laughs> We're leaving. Hello, Mark. Today. How are you? It's Mark from New York. How are you doing? I want to. You're going to have to finish this for me, right? We're going to be a part of it. New York. New Thank York. You. Nice. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm trying to practice uh, how you by doing singing tonight? because Peanut Gallery keeps wanting me to sing. So, no, no I yes, can sing yes, that. I... That stuff's fairly easy for me. However, Joe Jackson, it's a higher, it's a higher octave. I don't think I can pull that off, but I'll try. <laughs> That's funny. That's the thumbnail I used for the stream I'm doing of of, of this, and I, I'm doing my theme is all concerts. <laughs> what you're using, Joe Jackson? Well, no, that was that was just the thumbnail. Oh, okay. For, for the first one, for the yeah, you know, and then the theme is uh, concert staging, because we were hoping you were going to sing for us. <laughs> <laughs> I I know I know I promised I, and Peanut Gallery saying you promise like all right fine I, next break I will look up the freaking lyrics and again it's the problem is it's now it's a, I'm using a cover so I'm just gonna have to wing it and hopefully the lyrics will match up with whatever the beat is happening but I wish I had a better song <laughs> to be honest I love Joe Jackson stepping out but I it's one of those songs that I loved listening to I rarely. So I'm, I don't sing in the shower, so I rarely sing to anything. Lip sync every once in a while, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'm I, a, in the car singer. Are you? 
yeah, this way nobody, you know, there's nobody around to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> what I kind? Mean, what kind of music? I mean, I oh, dude, I listen to weird all sorts. Stuff. I listen to like Taylor Swift, uh, Suicidal Tendencies, Lady Gaga. Metallica. Right. I do love Taylor Swift. I like <laughs> uh, what's her name, Nicki Minaj. Oh my yeah. God, that girl got a butt. Love her. <laughs> yeah, I, I listen to all kinds of weird stuff. Good. Even a few country songs. I really like Willie Nelson. I met him once and always loved his music. He was cool. It was funny. I was a deputy at the time, and I had to guard his bus, you know, and keep the fans from, like, harassing him. Yeah. And he's like, hey, you want to come on board and smoke? And I'm like, uh, you see the uniform I'm wearing? What do you need? <laughs> it was so funny. But he was a cool dude. Way nice. cool dude. He waited to meet every fan. It was, like, 4.30 in the morning when we left. Wow. He, was, he was like, I will not leave till I meet everybody. I was like, yeah, see, impressive. I'm not going to, I am not doing that. When I'm out in <laughs> North Carolina, I mean, I'll meet a lot of people, but, and who knows? I mean, I, <laughs> 4.30 in the morning though, I don't know. Because remember, I have to do, I have to do back-to-back things. I have to do, I have to talk after lunch on the first day, and then I do the awards show, literally the last event of the, the, of the whole thing. And... If I don't get any sleep in that first night, I'm going to be just dragging, just dragging. Right, and the and the first thing you got you and Patricia are doing is at seven in the morning, right? Or right Something seven like in the that. morning? No, no, it's seven. No, it's seven yeah. at night. No, no, the opener for day one. I don't. No, I'm not part of the opener. Oh, okay. I thought that. Oh, I thought that's when you guys were talking that you were opening it and then you're going to end up closing it. No, and, no, and no. You Patri- were speaking Patricia, in the I. I think she's part of the panel that's opening. I don't know. I haven't looked at honestly. I haven't looked at the agenda really, but I know gotcha. that she, I, she and I are closing. But I don't. Right. Oh, I know I'm not. I'm opening. bringing a I'm suit. Not, I'm gonna wear a suit and be all professional for your uh, award show. Oh, for the award show. Okay. Absolutely. Be, it's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. We're giving out. I, I totally anticipate tons of fun. Yeah. It's I'm, gonna be uh, awesome. I, I'm I'll, just. I'll, I'm dying to know what. The VIP tickets get us, you know. I was like, I bought it that first day. I was like, I gotta have that. I know, and, and I'm dying. And to now know there's what that's now there's get. five more. I don't know how many there were right this second, but there were five more announced. I don't know where they squeezed them in, but they squeezed in another couple dozen people somewhere. Don't know what they Very got cool. rid of. Very cool. So yeah, yeah I don't know uh, if, hey. if I get to sitting in the front or or what. I don't know backstage I, that kind of crap. I don't know. I have a. I hope they don't sit in the front. It's oh. not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sitting next to Phil Jackson, right next to him on the on the court side. The um. I've got a quote for you. From Absolutely. The That'd be cool as hell. <laughs> I have a quote from the peanut gallery for you. Uh, it is a miracle okay. that curiosity survives formal education, and that was from Albert Einstein. That is truly amazing. He, he also so he also said that education is what's left after you forget everything in school, which I thought was also pretty good. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I, it's true. I mean, it, they just cloud our minds with garbage. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, uh, I have I have one for you. For you. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Shoot. What do you got? Um, it is wrong always everywhere and for everyone to believe anything upon ins- insufficient evidence. Who said that? And that was by W.K. Clifford. He was a uh, mathematician um, and a philosopher. And he, he was like, and I think that applies to more than just math. I think it applies to everything. You know, I mean, we, I, that eclipse stuff has been bugging the hell out of me. You know, yeah. I've been watching all the, everybody's footage and, their images and boy it just doesn't appear as what they're saying right you know the official story just like all the official stories <laughs> such yeah. a joke i agree oh man wholeheartedly and and before i sit before i send you off and pick up uh somebody from 619 area code do you um are you feeling better Yes, much better. I'm still very, I'm still tired yeah. from the pneumonia, but much, much better. I went Good. to work today. Oh, that was brutal. It was, it was crazy hard. And I, people were cool. They're like, "Hey, how you feeling?" I'm like, "Good. Don't fuck with me." <laughs> They're like, "Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha." 
Because nice. I was just not in the mood for any nonsense, you know. And everybody, like I said, everybody was cool. Uh, was Candy, by the way, wants to give you a message, but she hasn't typed it yet. Before you go, okay. what is it? Tell him I got my present and I love it. Oh, good. Happy and, birthday, Candy. And yes, happy birthday to Candy. And she was typing. I don't know if she's typing anything else. Should I sing happy birthday to her? Sure. I, I sent her a, um, a uh, Flat Earth Fire Department t-shirt. Oh, awesome. It. With a, with a 33 on it. Tell him thank yep. you and awesome. I love him mucho. Okay, fine. For her, she gets a happy birthday song. Ready? Happy birthday you to go. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hot Sex Candy. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. There you go. Subliminal message. Throw fantastic. Right in. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> I love those subliminal hot sex messages. They drive <laughs> no, me, they right? crack me up, man. They crack me up. And, and I, I gotta really say you're open there. them too. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, too that was funny. probably wrong. Too funny. Probably shouldn't have said throbbing. Not to you. Anyway, I don't know. It's a good word, but I like their <laughs> opener to uh, the secret show with Patricia today. Uh, cover story for the fifth. Uh, no, we weren't <laughs> at firearms training for the NSA. That was that was great. <laughs> I, I, was so I cannot of get jail. her to break uh, character. I can't do it. I uh, swear to God, so it awesome. just kills she's me. So good. Thanks. I. Uh, I was dying. I was dying. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Oh, man. Yes, All right, I'll let you go. Oh, she just, she oh. just sent a picture of her smiling. Oh, wearing the shirt. That's great. Awesome. 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 Now, now cool. she has a controversial shirt, which I cannot wear to the D marble function on Thursday. <laughs> he caught a lot of hell for that. I wear. I go in that wearing that T-shirt. Oh, it's like, really, people? Hey, really? 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 I, I mean, what do we... What are we fighting here? You know, I mean, come on. I don't know. Remember, conspiracy uh, people. Silly. They're awfully. I know, I know, I know. You're right. I mean, it's it's funny that this political correctness in it and everything you find it everywhere and everything. You know, it's like, come on, give me a break. This world right, is so messed I gotta, up. I, I gotta pick I up. I think we need that. I gotta pick All up. All right, I'll let you go. Hey, awesome. I will Keep talk to you soon. Okay. Work. Oh, and remember, I'm not. I'm Alrighty. not. Uh, I'm not here next week, so it's a rerun next week. Okay, good deal. All right. Awesome. Have a safe trip. All right, see you, bud. All right, bye-bye. Okay, let's pick up. Let's go straight to 619. I think if we have time, we'll go back to Beverly Hills. Like, who wouldn't want to go back to Beverly Hills, right? 619. Are you there? 619. Hey. Hey. Are you listening? Whoever is on the line right now, you didn't call in and like you think you're going to listen, right? Come on. In fact, what's the idea? Uh, I don't, I can't tell. Who's this? 619. No. No, just going to sit there, all quiet. I'm not going to bite, I promise. All right, last chance, five, four, three, two. I'm going to put you back on mute. All right, let's pick up 408. Sorry, Beverly Hills. You're going to have to wait for a little bit. For, for what and what just happened to that guy? He just hung up. All right, we're gonna go back to you know what? We're going back to Beverly Hills. All right, Beverly Hills, your luck just changed. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I'll then I'll go back because 408 hung up for some reason. What's uh what's going on? Man, All right, I'll give you I'll give you a couple minutes. What, what do you got? This is crucial information, man. We can't people can't be wasting time like that. <laughs> I Come agree. I agree. And well, every once in a while, this people will call in. And they won't know that uh, that I can talk to them. They think it's like a listen only line, and we have a separate <laughs> listen only line. But this isn't it. So. Oh my God, I suck at computers, and I even I can figure that out. Come on now. And it's a rookie mistake, and you hate to see it. What's? Uh, right. I like that thing. Same here, because <laughs> it's a baseball saying, really. <laughs> That's every once in a while, base basketball, but usually it's baseball. You know, and, and it's yeah, really, I've, you know, I've heard some. Goes Man, along with, uh, you know, like when a foul ball rips into the stands, like, ah, oh, there's a souvenir for a lucky fan. You know, one of those things. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, this is the uh, the other the other big concept I've been trying to wrap my head around, and that is that um, basically if 
you want to say God created it or an, an ET higher intelligence built it, um, then, okay, so if you're saying that God created it, then that means he created it with the, like what I was talking about before, he created it with the ability to fool a population. Right. So then God isn't so benevolent after all. Well, I mean, <laughs> why would God about, do Think that? about it this way. Is it, is it really, but it isn't malicious? Because if you're trying to create an illusion, if you, if you design humans in a certain way that they really, really, really hate captivity, and you don't want them to feel like they're in captivity, is it, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to call a little white lie or something, that saying is probably not appropriate, but <sighs> it, you, you're deceiving them in a way that it's for, again, it's straight up a mental institution, it's for your own good. What the what you don't know won't hurt you in that case. In fact, what you do know yeah, will but hurt you. That seems like it's it's below a god. Well, so then it's way below a god. I don't see how God but, would have anything to do with this. Well, they, you know what remember I mean? what I remember what I said all all those months ago, which is maybe this place was built not necessarily. Of course, you know, there's some divine influence, but maybe it was built by a higher civilization and not necessarily an all omnipotent power because I, I get what you're saying there, but are you, who are you to question not to quote scripture? Who are you to question <laughs> the motivation? You know, if, if we're to act naturally, what, who's, who's to say, I mean, it was designed, but, but let's put it this way. It wasn't designed oh, to be man, permanent. It wasn't designed to be permanent. Meaning we were going right. to figure out eventually it just took us, well, 5,000 years. And really, we we waited until we got the internal combustion engine. So, have have you heard uh, Flat Earth asshole talk about like the reset button that would happen sure. if we if we found out? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no. I, have I, you I, heard I, about that? Oh, of course. It's it's a it's a fa- it's it's really part of the hundredth monkey effect. If you guys don't know what that mm-hmm. is, look it up. Which is once we once a certain number of people know this then a threshold is reached in any simulation, anything we've ever built. It's all comes down to thresholds and triggers. And when you reach a certain threshold, yeah, it, it is, is it possible to reset routine? I know. It's, I don't want to see that. Re- I don't want to be alive for that. Well, reset. You know what I'm but, but you, I know we think of reset as a really bad thing. I don't know. It could, it could be a soft know, right? reset. I know you, everyone thinks, you know, the computer, you know, shuts down reboots, you know, we, we've all seen this. <laughs> But maybe it's not something yeah. as harsh as that. Maybe it's something a little, and, more, a little more elegant, I would think. Right. I hope so. And another thing that it's like, man, it's like it's funny because I can sit here and be like, oh, well, why does God have to have anything to do with it? Why couldn't it just have been uh, higher intelligence or ET? But then it's like, wait a second. What even is an ET if there is no space? Hmm. How do we even have a concept of an ET in the first place? We don't even know. I mean, everything we've been told about what our our own concepts of what an ET is is total has to be wrong because it's all based on the on the heliocentric model. Right, and it came from us. Oh, by the way, the peanut the peanut gallery wanted to chime in on one of your things. He said, uh, "God didn't lie; man made the lie." Meaning, Mm -hmm. what if? And it's something I've toyed with for a while in anyway, which is, what if we were the ones that were supposed to get to the outside naturally? But the kind of like the remember the remember, if you ever heard me talk before kind of like when the Truman Show, what if it wasn't Truman that <laughs> God, made it to the outside crazy. in the sailboat? What if it was the mayor? If the mayor finds out, does he go back and tell everybody? Right. <laughs> or does he keep it to himself and uses it to his own advantage? That's of what course. we're really talking and, about yeah. here. Yeah, you might tell Absolutely. the people. I might tell the people. People that have nothing to lose would definitely tell the people. But if you have a lot of power, a lot of influence, mm-hmm. you can risk that. I don't think and so. also compared compared to us, what is the difference between an ET and uh, or whoever built this and God? It's basically to us, it might as well be the same damn thing. Yeah, yeah, you're splitting hairs. Absolutely. Let me let me end this with you. Uh, really this, this, okay. put this yeah. part with you, but but I will I I will I, we will talk again. I promise. Crazy. Which is what I want to I want to make this point because I've said it on other things. Which is you're absolutely right. If a golden spaceship just decided to land somewhere in Europe. There are a mm-hmm. lot of people that would see mm-hmm. it as some sort of divine, you know, what's the difference there between uh, an advanced civilization and the divine power? Because at the very least, it's one step closer to the divine, but you don't know for sure. 
But there's some people that would latch onto it and say, oh, yeah, they're the right. closest thing to God. I'm going to worship these guys. Guaranteed. Beware of the, space, the fake alien invasion. Basically. There you go. <laughs> Beware of the fake alien invasion. Uh, All right, man. I got to let you go. I got a bunch of calls lined up. But I will talk, we'll so talk again talk soon, okay? And, uh, yeah. okay? and continue to suffer in Beverly Hills. All right? <laughs> I will, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, All right. Let's pick up. Uh, let's try this 408 one. See if we can get him. 408, I'm going to try to pick you up. You ready? Four, wait. What happened to him? 408, are you there? Hey, Mark. Hey. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going oh. on? All right. So I got in. Uh, long time listener. First time calling. Right on. I uh, kind of wanted to ask you two things. Yeah. I've been at Flat Earther for about a year now. Sure. And um, I got into Flat Earth because of Nibiru. Okay. You know Nibiru? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, you, I, you... I, was into, I was into Nibiru back in 2012. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was going to ask you, what do you think that had to do, I mean, link with Flat Earth? Do you think like, Nothing. we live in this really... it doesn't. It doesn't have to do with anything now. I think Nibiru... Because I look, man, nobody wanted a bureau more than me. I thought it was great. I mean, I was buying even more survival supplies when Nibiru was 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 threatening to go. But I think it was just globe reinforcement on a huge, huge scale. And that is not not only do you have planets out there that are messing around, they're just just sitting out there not threatening you. You have an entire solar system. That's part of you. You know that we're part of a binary star system, and that other star is coming straight for us. That is is the ultimate global conditioning fear, which was you. you it doesn't matter if you necessarily believe it or you don't believe it. It's that you're. It's 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 a topic that reinforces the globe. That's all it does. And they drug that thing out for as long as possible. I mean, at one point it's like, oh, it wasn't 2012. It was 2013. Oh no. I know. It's, I keep hearing about it. I mean, it's 2017. It's not coming. Yeah, no. It is no... Well, what do you think about those videos you see on YouTube? <sighs> no, there's like no... those videos people posting like um, like there's like another sun next to another sun. Yeah, yeah, like... yeah, yeah. No, no I what don't. Do you think no, as a matter that? of fact, nowadays, when I see anything next to the sun, you got to remember, it changes. That whole idea changes because if the sun is less than 50 miles in diameter, then whatever That's object... Yeah, there might be an object up there, but it's tiny by comparison. So I, I used to I'm, be the I'm, same. I'm sitting here wondering where it is. Eh, it could be anything Cause, now. Cause it's I mean, been spotted it, all over the country. It could be. It, I mean, if it's less than if it's if it's less than 50 miles wide, heck, it could it could be a spaceship, or you know, ship of some sort. I'm not going to say space, but yeah, it could be a ship because if you have a unified field engine, you can build ships that big, and it's not that big, not uh, not a problem. I, I used to be an astronomy nut and, and uh, Star Wars nut and then Flat Earth killed everything for me. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. I, I was, yeah, Star Wars, Star Trek. I watched every series, every movie, uh, with the exception of Farscape. I didn't watch that. And the question that got me. Go ahead. The question that really got me, um, like, doubting the globe Earth was when uh, I watched an episode of, um, it's like the Discovery, not Discovery Channel, but like uh, something about the galaxy. And they're saying like, oh, how they found planets from really far away by using the uh, the dip method, which is when the, when a planet passes its host star, it, the, the light dips, and how, the bigger the dip, the bigger the planet. And right. I'm thinking, you know, it's logical if it's under a light year. You know, I mean, if even under a light year, it'll still take you a year to notice the dip. So if you if you say like something that's a hundred light years away, how would you notice the dip? You have to stare there for like a hundred years I just know. to notice the dip. I know. I, you know don't I mean? don't get me started, like, man. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go down that road, <laughs> tell me how all the constellations are still intact when oh some of the stars are ten year light years away and some of them are ten thousand light years away. How are we not getting any parallax? How does that happen? You know, it's it's I like know. fine. You say the stars don't move ten years. You don't say they move a hundred years. Fine, five hundred years, a thousand years. More than that, and the constellations are still the constellations that we've been carrying, you know, around in the zodiac for a long, long, long time. No, no, it, 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 there's I too to, much. I try to discuss this to my friends and um, and t and tell them about about all this, and they just they keep denying it and like, well, you know, globalist thing that they do, which is, yeah. well, how's this and how's this and how's I'm like, man, you have never seen any of that. You you're basically going off all of these words. Yeah, not just know? other people's yeah. words. The the military. That's what you're going off of. 
know, the, you're, you're actually yeah, you're, you're hinging everything on in the beginning the United States and the Soviet military, and you say, well, they might not lie to us. It's like, are you kidding me? That's what they do. I, I told one of, one of my friends who watched um, Eric Dubay's 200, 200 Proof that Earth's not spinning ball. Yeah, he watched it twice and still thought that we live on a globe. And I was like, okay, I can't, you're way beyond. Like, I can't yeah, save you. Fine. He'll 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 get his in the end. Not everyone's gonna be able to to do well, it, but he'll he'll I'll, figure it out. I'll, like like Sansu says, I'll I'll just pick and choose my battles. There you go. I'll just yeah. So, you know, any uh, any anyway, shout outs because I, we're uh, we're going to break here. Um, oh, um, Mark New York because I he just called in just like like a couple couple minutes. Yeah, he ago, did. Didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, I hope I hope he's feeling better. I've been listening to you guys since 2013, so I I finally had time to call because I was so busy work and I finally made supervisor. So oh cool. I'm just using the power. <laughs> nice way way to do <laughs> it, man. Like, uh, power, power corrupts. Yeah. So. Uh oh, we're yeah. it's the news. But we hey, gotta hey. go. I will talk to you soon, though. Okay. All right, man. All right, Mark. Nice talking to you, man. All right, All right. bye. Bye. This is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate. No hype. No fear. Real people. Real radio. Into the light. Not made for me. Same thing over and over. Eh, I tried. I it's it's just not my song. You guys are gonna have to pick a different song if, if I'm gonna sing something like that. It's just too high. Joe Jackson is just too damn high. Seriously, play that back. In fact, Peanut Gallery is speechless. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to Strange World. That was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And that was me. I told you, I, you guys got to trust my judgment on this. I know what I can sing and what I can't. And he goes, find YMCA go. Really? I actually know the lyrics to that. Uh, we got calls. And let's try 619. 619, are you there? Or are you just listening? Because I'm going to drop you. Oh, Six, 619. You what, what's, what's going on? You, can hear. Are you, listen- you can't hear me. You can't hear me now. I can. I can hear you uh, now. Can I can. I can hear you. <laughs> good. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. The mic on my cheap earbuds, you know, finally broke. So that's 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 on. okay. Are you calling from San Diego? I am calling cool. from San Diego. Yeah. What uh, yeah. What's going on out in San Diego? Well, so. San Diego. <laughs> hey, it's a be- you got to understand. I don't know if you've been outside of San Diego, but it's a beautiful city. There's very few cities that I could actually say because I'm from the Northwest. I love San Francisco. I love San Diego and a few on the East Coast. But I'm mostly a West Coast type of guy. So enjoy oh, it, here, even here, though you guys lost your football here, team. I'm sorry. Here, 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 man. I was just writing this in the chat room. You were asking about you were talking about the song Sinatra. I bet you can do Sinatra. I can do Sinatra. I can. Absolutely. Absolutely, can do Sinatra. I'm more. Great, so I'm anyway. more of a. I'm more of a crooner. I can't do the the high stuff. Doesn't do anything for me. I mean, I I just don't have that sort of range, and I don't know if I'd want that sort of range. So I wasn't I like. Do, do you remember? Do you, are you old enough to remember the Brady Bunch? But I did not watch it. I was already off TV. Oh, okay. The Brady there, there was an episode where <laughs> Peter Brady's Peter Brady's voice changed, and they like they milked that, and and so you know they in fact they even wrote a song around you know time to change it's time to read. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sha na 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 na. Uh, what 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 do you want? Anything on your mind? Hey, well, I got you. Yeah, and yeah, and uh. Gosh, I really wish the uh, it was a good moment before uh, 
because the caller before me was uh, talking about philosophy, and it just spun me into this memory that I want to share, which is, uh, so I was a nanny for a while, and it was the beginning of the nanny. So I had just known the little boy a few months. He was about not even four yet. So we had to go to the architect's. Uh, so his parents were inside, and he and I were sitting outside. And uh, later, he was uh, he was diagnosed with Asperger's, but he didn't have any Asperger's <laughs> at this point. And okay. but, but here's, here's but he he's brilliant. And we're sitting there quietly, and he says all of a sudden, "Regular girl." Well, he, he said my name, and then he said, "Why are we in this world anyway?" <laughs> so. I thought, whoa, wow. Um, this moment, you know, his parents aren't even here for this. Like, I'm, like, entrusted with this question, right? Yeah. And uh, so I said so I said to him, nobody really knows. Um, but when you get older, you know, there's lots of books and things that people who are kind of asking that same question have written. And, you know, most likely you'll be interested and you can check that out. Well, he was satisfied with that answer, but um, because of the the, uh, the nature of the material here, you know, that's, we're talking about the world uh, and the earth, uh, I thought I'd share that story. Um, yeah. Anyway, the reason I'm calling is because I want to ask you a question about um, surveying, the measuring of the land, because I, had, I keep thinking that, you know, really the issue behind the scenes is when they say we own this and they've measured it in acreage or whatever they're doing. Right. I am certain because I'm certain because of the nature of reality that it, it, see, I don't think it's very, it's not completely solid, the land. Okay. So the, I think they're always, they're always fighting over boundaries you know like that's True. why i think they're, they're really not they're not going to build the wall because they're too busy still fighting you know over yeah. <laughs> all this what and um look that's the issue it's about real estate and i just was gonna i just wanted to ask you a question about uh if you could talk a little about how they measure land and sure do you know, I can uh, I can tell you this because I've talked to several surveyors and there's two types of surveyors in the world there's planar surveyors yeah and there's geodetic surveyors 95% of them not I'm probably higher a percent of the world surveyors are planar p l a n a r which means literally they treat their projects, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, like the world is absolutely flat, paper on table flat, and that's how they're told to treat their projects. And the, the, some of the guys I've talked to were long timers, and they all said the same thing. It's like, yeah, we, we treat the project like it's flat and everything works out just fine, and everybody's other project butts up against ours, north, south, east, and west, like crackers lining up to each other. He goes, but sooner or later, somebody's going to have to deal with the curve, right? Because if you're building a city and the city's 20 miles wide, those inches and feet add up. You can't just tweak here and there and hope everything works, especially not on big, big parcels of land. And that's not what happens. He goes, it's always perfect. It's like, it's like the world is made out of Legos and everything just snaps in perfect to each other. He goes, but that doesn't happen on a ball. And I sort of use the analogy of trying to put wheat thins on a basketball you're going to have gaps. You're going to have these weird, odd shapes. You're not going to be able to do it. And that's, that's, how they, that, that's how they do land right now. And the big tracts of land, the really big tracts, I mean, 250 miles or bigger, square miles or bigger, those are done by geodetic surveyors. But they don't have to be that detailed because it's such a big parcel of land. Those are the guys that do national parks and stuff like that. Okay. So the, the most, most with your house and the store you go to and the stadium you go to, they're all done by planar surveyors, and they all treat the world like it's perfectly flat, even though they are told, since they're in grade school, that it's not. So there you go. And and you get there's an interview. There's, there's several interviews on this that are on my uh, my channel. 
under subject on their subject matter expert playlist that you can listen to that cover cover this stuff. How's that? How, put that in your yeah, pipe and smoke. I, 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 yeah, and and really, why I wanted to talk about that is just sort of point eyes to the direction of, you know, follow the money, you know, yep. real estate. It's still a huge, you know, big deal. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's well, what you're fighting over. Right? You're, you're quoting it. you're quoting Lex Luthor. I mean, it's it's the it was the premise <laughs> for the premise for Superman too, and that is, you know, money is just money. Men can be bought and sold, uh, uh, but when it comes to land, that's the only thing they're not making any more of. People will always pay through the nose for land. And yeah, it's a good, it's a good one. Hey, uh, any, I hate to do this that's to you, right. but unfortunately I've, there's still some more calls. I gotta, I gotta grab before the end of the evening. Do you uh, have any shout outs you want to give any little nuggets no, of wisdom? No, 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 no wisdom here. I just want to thank you. Great show. Really great show. Thank you for your, <laughs> Lending well, your fabulous talents to the cause, wow. the nameless cause, <laughs> the nameless cause. Yeah, the nameless thanks. cause. No, no, we're we're gonna we're gonna change this world before it's over. Yeah. You wait. It's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna be big. So you can you can be one of the people I that you know. It. You can say, you know what? I was I there. It. I know. I knew. I knew before okay. you did. You can hit him in the head okay, with a frying so... pan. <laughs> Upside the head. Yep. That's <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Hey, Bye. you have a good yeah. rest of your evening. Talk to you soon. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's pick up. Uh, who is this? Uh, five five one zero five one zero area code five one zero. You are on live with Russian news. Russian news all the time. Chris, Chris Burke, New York. Chris Burke, California. How are you? <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? Oh man, that was my best rest I can do. Of a dog. <laughs> it's going good. In in and and you again for people that don't know, he is calling from Pittsburgh, California, because sometimes that happens. Yes, 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 yes. Man, I gotta tell you, man, I love the new floor to the phone floor, man. No how you can see in the background here the show is awesome. Cool. Got a question for you, and uh please correct me if I'm wrong. So sure. we're gonna human we're gonna uh hear so we're going to humor the, the heliocentric model. So we have been capable of, you know, discovering all these galaxies and sending all these probes all over the place, right? Yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, we have yet been able to go to the deepest parts of the ocean floor, correct? Yes, also correct. So I mean, they, I mean, they say, off. yeah, like the Mar the Marianas Trench. Suppose that we can do a few things down there, but wet. You're right. We, we we do very little in terms of actual exploration here compared to what they claim is space. Yeah. Right. Right. And if and if that, and if this is true, you know, from, from what we can gather, and how they are sit there and say, yeah, there are parts of the ocean floor that is yet undiscovered, but we're just spending all this time out. And quote unquote space. I mean, you know, just something to make you, make you think about, you know. Yeah. You know, it's a good it's a good point. And it's yeah. it's all no matter what you hear about, whatever probes, you know, the, the gem Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, uh, the Pioneer program, the Voyager program, all those and anything they're talking about, the rings of Saturn, the whatever's on Neptune, the face on Mars, the circle on Jupiter, every time they talk about that, they're only talking about one thing. And that is the globe subtext. That's it. That's all That's they're going to talk about. That's it. Yeah. They don't care. They don't care if you. They don't care if you, they don't care if you buy the story or not. They do not care. All right. they literally talk about, or all they want to, all they want you to do is subliminally say, "Oh yeah, that's an interesting story." I'm on a globe. It doesn't matter if you even read the story, as long as you read the headline. That's all they want. So. Uh Man, I'm learning that the subconscious mind is a very powerful thing. Man. Very, very powerful. powerful. Very powerful. Oh, Seriously, man. I could I could yeah. plant some subconscious sub hot sex messages into your head right now, and you may not even know it. Right. Yeah. yeah it's so true. And uh, what was the call you had on earlier from uh, out of state? Uh. Out of country, or, uh oh, oh, Malaysia. What was he calling? For? Malaysia. Malaysia, yeah, that was a very interesting call. Uh, it yeah. Like he was a person who had a lot of, a lot of good information. 
he he had some stuff written down there. I could hear the papers rattling, and he, he yeah, if I would have yeah, let yeah, him I'll go, he would have been yeah. talking for a while, which is fine. But uh, in fact, maybe maybe yeah. I'll have him Shark, on. Yeah, yeah, Shark Fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, I hope he call in again because uh, he was bringing some very interesting, uh, you know, uh, aspects and thoughts and stuff. And, and you know, for us who are quote unquote uh, kind of you know long range into this, you know, to have a different fresh perspective is always a good thing. And, right. and it, you know, you, you, like you said, we try to deal with the simple things, and, but yet still, some of the most simple things be some of the most vulnerable things for people to grasp. And when you were talking earlier about right. the parallax, you know, with the stars, and I thought that to people, I'm like. Don't you find that amazing that the constellations of the stars just have not changed? As long as we have been recording it for, for, for us, what we know, nothing has changed. I was like, you don't think that's strange? I mean, some people get it, some people don't, you know, like my call said, kind of pick and choose your battles. And yeah, some people just ain't going to get this. I, I, I remember uh, one of the videos, the guy said, even if someone told me that the earth was not round, I'm still going to believe that it's round. I mean, that's it. That ain't. If that ain't the definition of perfect cognitive, I don't know what else to say. Oh, like, yeah. Even though everything about reality can... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I remember... Well, the, the quote that I put in the description box of just about every video I have out there, that quote from George Orwell, when he... He, and he was not a flat earther, but he said something very, very interesting. And he wrote this in 1946. He goes, it's interesting that people will believe pretty much anything science tells them. You could go up on to someone on the street and say, how do you know the Earth is a globe? And they will all say the first the first thing they will say is, well, we know. It's obvious. It's, it's a given, right? And then when you try to press them on it and say, well, how do you know? Then they start getting agitated. They start getting angry. And... He was talking about the responsibility of science, but I thought it was more interesting that people on the street believed this in 1946 when NASA wasn't even literally founded until 1958. So how did go. they know, how did they know all the way up until 1946? How did you know 1900, 1800, 1700? You knew because they told you. That was it. They just exactly. said, "Oh yeah, this is this is exactly. where you live." And 20 generations later, you're born into it. You didn't have a chance. You know, because you're you had there, there was nobody up, up, that was born ahead of it. Your father and his father and his father's father, everybody believed it. So you believing it, pff, you literally had no chance. None. There's nobody alive there that, that there ever go. knew it was flat. So there you go. And I believe that the, the, uh, this is just you know my my speculation on it. But those who are quote unquote in the you know I have said for spending all that time, you know. The reason why they appear to be so happy is because there is that uh, that that uh, unknown beachfront, you know, that nobody knows about. So it ain't like right. that, you know. Some people probably think, oh, or maybe they close. No, those people might close it down a remote island that we don't know about. This is all speculation, but you know, hey, yeah. it's it's. If, 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 the, if the very word that's been presented to us has been, you know, a hoax in the first place, then obviously your mind has got to go to those particular places. I mean, nothing is off the table. I just see one thing that I wake up to every day that nothing is off the table. Everything is up for speculation. And I remember, uh, and I, I don't know if you probably got some other calls, but I was talking to my pastor a couple of weeks ago, and I said, Pastor, I said, you know what, now when I read, you know, the Bible now, it really it really sounds like the Lord of the Rings, man, trilogy. And he was like, absolutely. So it just, yeah, it, 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 you, you, you can open up some new aspects and your brain go different places. So. Yep. But it's a good yep. thing. It's a good yep. thing. I wouldn't change it for the world. And I feel like I feel like Martin Luther King, man. I wouldn't have chose to, to be born in any other time but the time that I'm in now. And I'm, I'm very proud and appreciative to be a part of this. Yeah, nice. I can't wait to see where it goes. And um, yep. my shout yep. out to uh, my brother Mark. Good, uh, glad to see he's doing better. And uh, shout out to the birthday girl, Miss Candy, out there. Happy birthday to you! And uh, yeah, man, let's keep the flat, and uh, yeah, let's continue to keep keep it pushing. All right, man. Thank you, thank you very much for your support. It is appreciated. All good, Mark. Always good here for you, my friend. Take care. All right. See ya. Have a good night. All right. See. You. All right. So, who else can we pick up before we? Close down for the night. We got like nine minutes. Texas, have I talked to you before tonight? Yes. Oh boy. Why? Why? Oh. <laughs> why, you, oh, oh wait. Are boy. you? Are you? Were you just listening, or did you want to talk? I actually wanted to talk. 
I, I thought, all right, <laughs> what's, <laughs> what, uh, what's, go, well, what's going what, on? What was the guy that called in again? You kept holding him from Hollywood. Is that, oh, uh, from Beverly from? Hills. Yeah, I, I don't Beverly know. I don't Hills. know. Yeah, I Beverly just Hills. wanted to say this about, you know, if there is a God. Yes. I think he has the wrong interpretation of him because if you believe in somewhat of the Bible, even if some of it may be misconstrued, which I don't, but that doesn't matter. He sit down, he cast the, the Satan out, which was his friend, I believe, out of heaven because he was fighting with him. And he gave this world to be his dominion and have power over are you, I know you're familiar with this because you grew up religious. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I'm I'm hearing it. Yeah, I I know people. They keep. I know exactly where you're going with this, which is look, it heaven was not without its conflict. You know, it was in fact conflict so bad that it, you know, if you follow chapter and verse, that a third of the residents were exiled. A third, one in every three people up there was exiled, and so you can't tell me. It was just a place, a harmonious place with, uh, with choirs and harps and gleaming gold and, and, and pure white walls. There was, you know, trouble in paradise, like a lot of places. And aren't, let's, let's, let's face it here, aren't the best stories full of conflict? I mean, look, look at yeah. all your best pitcher winners for the last 80 years. They're all, yeah. most, most best pitcher winners are tragedies. And we are part of a greater story that we don't even have a clue of, of the, the oh, narrative. We, ha- we have no idea of what's going on. So my, my, if he's still listening, my point would be to say, don't look at it that our creator is below what he right. is. You're, you're making God, he, you're making god as perfect as we want you know you're doing that temporary happy ending thing and i'm not trying to be blasphemous or anything like that but but i I know where you're going which is you're you're turning god into a you know the white the 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 big white guy with the 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 guy that looks like santa claus in a bathrobe really and you know with sandals well i do believe he is perfect probably but you know he made something and it he, he let us have our own free will. And he probably did that maybe with Satan, too. Or Lucifer, or whatever, you, the morning star, whatever you want to climb. Yeah. And he used his free will, and God said, okay, I don't like your free will. I'm casting you down here. And this is your place to exist. And he's been doing what he's doing, and that's why we're in the boat we're in. And God probably knew he was going to do that. That's why he sent Jesus our salvation or whatever. I, you know, many people look at it in different religions in different ways, whatever. Yep. Yep. But that is the whole point of well, what we're doing here. And I don't care who you are. Sorry. That's what flat earth, that's what flat earth is going to bring everybody. I to agree. If they fight. F- flat earth so, is not only is it the discrimination killer and the fear killer, it is also a message of hope which is why it's resonating better than anything out there right now. Exactly. So and, in, um, you, you get 60 seconds. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a last caller. What do you got? Okay. Well, I would like for you to talk about the Burning Man Festival if you have any time. Oh, the Burning Man Festival? Yeah. Because, you know, my sister has her TV on Fox News constantly. And oh. I asked her because I, I work for her. She's been watching the news every day, all day, all along. And she had heard nothing about this man running into this thing, and she never heard of it, he actually. And I'm like, how have you never heard of the Burning well, Man Festival they're, they're trying, every they're year? Trying, they're trying to downplay it because they don't want any bad publicity. Look, the guy was probably on a whole bunch of drugs. And, you know, they just and got, they, got they, into They probably fr- gave him those drugs. They probably did. It's it's a it's one of those it's an art festival really, and you know art festivals I mean, the drugs going hand in hand. Well, you know the year before, or it might have been the year before last, they burnt some guy 
ashes that had previously died. It was a famous actor. I don't remember who it was. Mm. And he, they, he, they wanted his ashes put in the Burning Man to be burnt, or they just did it. I don't know. I don't know either. Hey, I got, I got to let you go because I got to see if I can grab one more before the. All right. Nice. All right, but hey, thank you for calling twice. You're welcome. You have a good night. All right, you too. Bye bye. All right, bye. Hey. Oh no, she's gone. And he's really gone. Uh, last chance, three minutes. Anybody wants to call in? Last chance. Don't be scared. Long time listeners, first time callers. I don't care. Do I judge? No. All God's children. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm going to sing anymore tonight, though, because I don't know what song I'd sing. I don't know. But Peanut Gallery was asking, was saying Village People. But I don't know. Village People is, it's that's more of a like a cheerleader song, more than more than anything. So, uh, let's see. There's a couple. Oh, good lord. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I just said. All right. Let's see. Two two and a half minutes. Uh, who who should I pick up here? Nope, nope, Utah hung up. I'm going to try this guy right here. I think this is also another Yellow Submarine. That's an interesting recommendation. And also kind of a drunk person song. Oh, uh, let's pick up 626 real quick. Okay, 626, you got 60 seconds. I'm closing out the show. Hey, what's up, dude? <clears throat> I 60 forgot seconds. To... I mean it. I will cut you off. Go ahead. I forgot to mention uh, happy birthday to Candy. I've been chilling with them on the hangouts and stuff. Oh, cool. And on top of that, real quick, uh, someone hit me the other day with the whole, how is the earth flat and the rest of the planets round? Well, reverse that on them. Why are the other planets round? And when you take the water off of earth, it looks like a, like a booger. <laughs> like, it, like, you know what? Why are That's... they perfectly round and we're, like a misshapen ball. Good point. Good point, man. All right. I got to close up the show, but thank you. That's uh, a, that's all right, a, that's, man. Good night. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right. That is the end of the calls for tonight. We're not taking any more. We're not going to take that one. We're not going to take that one. We're not going to take one. But thank you for everybody who called in tonight. Uh, always love to hear from you. And again, don't be shy. You say, oh, I don't have anything to talk about. Oh, please. This woman here wanted me to talk about Burning Man. I think I've got an opinion on pretty much any everything. Uh, special shout out, if she's still listening, to a very old friend of mine who is going through potentially some health issues. And I hope that whatever happens this week, I hope it turns out fine. Because I hate to worry about old friends. And with that, will the music kick in here in just a second? Oh, thanks to the peanut gallery. I know I keep ignoring him. Some people think he's not a real person. But uh, hey, come back next week. We'll be here. Same flat time, same flat channel. Baby, what is this? What is this? Kicking? Is, the, is that a model of the flat geocentric Earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing?